Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 159th episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition, the final preparations. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle, also known as Guards the Low. He's a Philodox of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Cora. She's an Aruna in the Geta Fenris. Hi, I'm Adam. I play Mark Guides the Fallen, and he's a third of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, speaks in sweet whispers. He is a theurge of the Silent Striders. Hello, my name's Thomas. I play Dimitri Howells in memory, Lupus Galliard of the Bone Nars. Hi, my name is George. I am playing William Groves Matrices. He is a Arun of the Glasswalkers. Last time, the Pax moved north to find Little Meatball and finally get in contact with Earth Pillar. Speaking with Earth Pillar, they were able to collect the child. However, they were hounded by calls from the good doctor, the good doctor entering their dreams, calling their phone, and making sure that they knew that their suffering would be by his hands. The pack's not sure what to do, could only move forward, and now have entered the Sept of the Green with Meatball, a few days before the Concordant is finally called. After getting to New York, you have been shuffled to the finer, or the uh, the Motel 38, which is not the best establishment. However, the windows are darkened, few people ask questions, and it's a good place to hide Little Meatball amongst humans without having to enter the Umbra. Garu have already started to come from all over the area, and you are dealing with the fact that several large hotels have been booked for some of the Garu to be here early. Some are still doing back at backroom deals, so to speak, leading up to the Concordant, and they will likely be put on the table when the Concordant comes about. Oddly enough, Shadow Dagger is the one that brought you to this hotel, and you haven't really seen Agatha as much. What is it that you'd like to do in these three days, if anything? Um, so Kyle would like to have a conversation with the kid. Uh, anyone else? Any thoughts? Anything you want to do? I, c- I could imagine maybe we have to stave off a few of the curious that want to leer at the thing that's, you know, brought them all this way. But I'm guessing that where we are will probably help with that. So I would figure we'd be pretty protective of the kid. Other than talking to Meatball, as uh, Tyler suggested in the outro last time about what's about to happen, if you still want to do that. Yeah, that's I'm fine with that. Do uh, we want to talk to Shadow Dagger specifically before this all kicks off? I, I was just going to ask, is there a benefit to talking to him, uh, him again here? You know, the only the only thing would be is if there's anything last minute, and then the whole, like, if you fuck us on this, like, please don't. Um, but I imagine he's already in too deep, that, that living up to his deed name in a nasty way is probably just Sean being suspicious. Okay, but I think that's a good route though we should talk to meatball definitely do any of you have pe- you people your characters want to talk to about protecting your kinfolk and your family i remember one time you uh remember the pack of the bronzed moon and uh there was that yeah and the alpha ended up in the same uh appleton uh research facility are they yes. still around they're still around i'd like to find them okay or if they're still here, yeah. They are. I do have one question. You said Agatha isn't around much. Is that we've seen her, but she's doing other other stuff, and we just don't see her very much, or she, we haven't seen her at all? You just haven't seen her at all. Okay. Zeb will leave some, you know, hobo signs out for his ma'am to find him at some point, but that might also be post-concordant, not pre. But he would at least take that action. Okay. Kyle is going to take exactly no effort to try and protect anyone that he loves because mostly Kyle doesn't love a lot of people 
Uh, <laughs> Fuck them kids. Uh, and the ones he does, I don't know if people know he loves them. So it's better to just not tell people. <laughs> Everyone knows he likes Steven. That one's easy. Everyone else is an enigma, so best to keep that to himself. <laughs> uh... um, and then, uh, if they've got time, um, just like a... Cora wants to look around for Agatha, because I remember she was not doing too hot last time we were here. And uh, she's c- concerned about Aunt Ag- Agatha, you know? Auntie Aggie. Sure. <laughs> she's concerned. All right. So we'll start with kid talk, and then we'll branch out from there. As Meatball is trying to look out the window, as he does hear, thanks to heightened senses of Krynos, some kids a couple streets over playing, and he is absolutely trying to look through the window to get a good look at them. How old, like, because I know that uh, Krynos born are, like, they age weird uh, in in relation to a, in like to like how wolves age and how humans age how old approximately like he's almost a year old so that means he's probably the equivalent of four five oh okay so he's got a decent vocabulary now uh so kyle is going to walk up to him and say little one could we sit on the bed and talk for a minute as he looks at Nas and goes sure papa Kyle will go sit on the bed. As he walks over and sits, as he's still like, probably like four or five feet now. This is a very important conversation that we need to have, and it's about why we're here and what we're going to be doing for the next two or three days. So I need you to pay attention to it, okay? There are many people coming, like us, to have a very large meeting to talk about things. Many of these people will not be kind to you. Why? Because many of our people are not kind in general, and some of them do not like your birth parents, or that they were your parents. Why why meet with them then? We are meeting with them to make sure that you get to stay safe, because many of them have decided that you are dangerous, and they are afraid. And although they will be mean, our hope is to convince them that there is no reason to be afraid of you that you are kind and good, or as kind and good as any Garu. So I'm not kind? That is a decision for you to make as you get older, and now. Cora will perk up and just come over and sit on the bed next to Meatball and like just kind of cuddle her, cuddle him close. So understand, being kind and being nice are very different. Being nice means Sure, sometimes you're 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 being sweet and you're you're not saying everything that you need to say so that it saves the person's feelings. But being kind sometimes means that you have to say something that might hurt their feelings even if it's the truth and even if it makes them uh, even if it's the truth and makes them a better person in the long run. We want to lift our brothers and sisters, our cousins, up so that they are better, even if that means telling them the hard things. Does that make sense? I I think so. Mama, can I be kind right now? Of course. Why did you leave me? That is a very kind... uh, Yep, that's right. So I'm going to be kind right back, okay? Can I be kind to you right back? He nods. All right. So we... As I guess a family, huh? Um, have a lot of really hard decisions to make. And we had to leave you with Earth Pillar because what we were doing, we could not take you with because it could not, it might not have been safe for you. And we were talking to a lot of people about this meeting that we're having so that we can show them and convince them to see that you are kind. And you can choose to be nice if you want to, but most of all, you are kind. And Nods thinks, I think I understand. Do you feel like we we wanted to leave you with Earth Pillar? You didn't turn around when I called. I was crying. 
And is I was crying under- bad? No, not r- really bad. But a lot of our cousins think that it is. They think it's weak. So we cry sometimes on our own, sometimes with our packs. But in front of everybody, it can be difficult if you cry in front of them, unfortunately. And that's not the greatest thing, is it? Am I not part of pack then? You'll have your own pack. But I want to so, be part of your pack. For right now, yes. As you grow, you'll make friends. So all of us didn't have a pack before. Can you believe that? We changed. I don't know if Earth Pillar ta- talked about that, but we changed and we didn't know what we were doing. And we were all alone. We didn't have a pack. And we found each other. And we were put together. And we formed bonds. And that's kind of what we're doing right now, huh? That forms a pack. But as you grow, you'll form bonds with other Garu, with other cousins, and they might become your pack. The nods. But for right now, I would say yeah. And we will be family, regardless of what pack you are in or we are in. Mm -hmm. There is one more thing to talk about. I told you about the people who would not be kind. There is also another group. They also have a lot of thoughts and feelings about the circumstances of your birth and your parents, but they sit on the exact opposite side. They may be very kind and very nice, but they think a lot of things. It isn't your responsibility. It's you don't have to do the things they think you should do, the things they want you to do. You get to choose when you get older and some, to some extent now, but there will be a lot of, of expectations that they have of you and you will hear all about them in just a couple of days. But your life and everything you do it within it, they are your choice. Kind of slowly nods. Uh, we will be here for you and with you throughout all of this. Kind of nods again and goes, will, will Papa's and Mama be here the whole time? Can, can I go outside? I hear, hear play. Unfortunately, there are a lot of rules we must follow while we are here. And after this, after the three days have passed, we will be going somewhere that hopefully you can play in the open. But here, we have to remain secret. Like, this is the only form that I can take while I am here. I cannot take the other forms for now. So you're worried about be- be- betrayal. Is this a word you learned from Earth Pillar? Nods. In a sense, yes, we want to avoid betrayal. We don't want to betray the rules that we have set for ourselves. And that's we can't take these forms around the others that can't take these forms. Oh, so that they don't do a war of rage upon you. As he smiles, remembering his lesson. Mark will kind of... Oh, uh... I guess in a sense, little one, yes. So the humans don't wage wage their war of rage against us. But, uh, yes, we have many rules, and you will learn about all of them as you get older. For now, one of the most important things to remember is that we, everyone in this room, is Garu. Those you hear playing outside are human, just human. And they are very afraid of us. Kind of nods. And we don't want them to be Garu or they'll do a war of rage. (laughs) It's just like, fuck. I, well. Here, here's a gun, do a crime. (laughs) (laughs) And it's it's like, We need to rename him Speaks the Damnest Things. Speaks uncomfortable truths. Yes. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Maybe we can ask him what he would prefer his name to be. <laughs> do you like the name Meatball Bites the Hand That Feeds? Or, like, <laughs> what well, do you. He can't be Meatball Forever anyway. He cannot uh, be Meatball Forever. Our chosen Messiah, Meatball. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to imagine him, like, trying to get a driver's license. Like, yes, Meatball. And it's like, is that, is that a first and last name? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Meatball Smith. 
<laughs> meatball, <Turns> meatball. <laughs> <laughs> Meatball Smith turns around to us, winks. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler or Kyle just turns to Cora. See, he inherited someone's intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, Mister Meatball was my father. <laughs> Technically true, when the first Ronin was done with him. <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh no. Apply aloe to area. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Was... Oof. <laughs> All right. So, Cora, you get you hear a. Uh, Cora will, uh, give me ball a quick hug and um, go to the door. Is there a looky looky loo hole? Yep. As you see the red eye looking in, before. Leaning back as you see the pale skin Steven. Okay, she'll she'll open the door. Hey, bud. Hey, wow. Come Look on at in. you getting so big as Meatball's hackles raise. This is one of our best friends. He is the coolest. Hairs kind of start to go down, but watches with some suspicion. Anyway, I'm in town early. I brought some of the cubs. They have. They've gone through their first change. They have a hotel. It's the lap of luxury for them. And on someone else's dime. Fantastic. Wait till they hear about a continental breakfast. Oh, I'm gonna get kicked out of a hotel. It's <laughs> fucking great. And it'll help me fill out my travel log book. Since when have you had a travel log book? Since like a couple months ago, as he pulls out like the dirty little like line paper spiral out of his jacket pocket. It is an important piece of American history and documentation. I am going through all 50 and ranking how brittle the cops are. Well, how many samples are you taking from each state? Oh, you get a couple samples. You gotta normalize the graph. No less than five. From different cities or towns, of course. Well, I'm sure the Bonar community is looking forward to your findings. Uh, you're looking at a future bestseller, let me tell you, as he shoves it back into his coat pocket. So, uh, are you high enough rank to vote this time, or are you Adrian or Fostern again? Every Adrian, but everyone gets a vote. That's the best part. But they'll probably vote towards what their elders want. A lot of people like to brown nose. This so happens that my elders are actually fucking smart. Sorry, bud. <laughs> well, you have me as an athro, so of course. But yeah, in town early, getting kind of a vanguard going for repping Sacred Stone. How was everything looking before you left? Uh, interesting. Howling King looked shaken. I heard there was some weird shit. Like, crime just fucking spiked in one area. Out of fucking nowhere. I guess some guy tried to rob a bank. All the cameras died. But some guy tried to rob a bank, and then some lone fucking 1920s Yahoo jumped through the window and shot him a couple times. I know Howling King was in the area, but he doesn't want to talk about it. He seems kind of put off. Whoever did that sounds like, you know, a hero. I. Yeah, I guess so. It's just, just weird, right? There was horse manure down in fucking downtown. That's never happened unless there was a parade. Just out of nowhere. Sounds like one of those mysteries that'll just never be solved, you know? I guess uh, you're fucking smiling. We just, we just trade great delight in vigilantism. All right. All right. Anyway. Anyway, I'm gonna... I was just jumping around. They gave me this address. They knew I was in the good. Uh, plus, I know enough Bonars that that stingy old Shadow Lord can't keep a fucking secret from me. Hey, Steven. Yeah. Um, horror? can we talk outside? For a minute? Yeah, sure. Awesome possum. I guess she's still taken away by my love language when we took on that cop and fucking brained him. The hottest thing I've ever seen. Or done. <laughs> Alright, boys. Catch you later. We'll start it we're gonna start another concordant without you. So, um I guess as they're outside, Cora's gonna talk quietly, uh, in hopes that, you know, Meatball doesn't overhear too much but 
Uh, so they, the, I, she'll try and get Stephen like a little bit away from the door as well. So if if the concordant doesn't go how we want it to, there are some of us who, who have family that we care about, you know. And if possible, Stephen pulls just... you in for a big hug and say no more. Or I'll hug him back. Thank you. It's always a big worry. I know that my family's broken. My my parents are broken people right now. So just make sure that they don't die. They won't. At least not from anything but old age or the apocalypse. As long as I'm breathing. Thank you. <clears throat> anyway, should we stay here a little bit longer? Make them wonder? I mean, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> so, Mark... You start moving through, trying to find your uh, old, old friends. You haven't seen them since the Appleton uh, time, but you do remember where they used to hang out. So you do see them. You see Mary Knight's eye. She is missing her left hand since the last time you saw her. She's got several new battle scars. They're hanging out in an old abandoned building, just like before. You see Jason, Maw of the Wild, as he's uh, got like band accessories and all that around him. But he's his hair has been almost cut short. His his uh, his locks gone. He's buzz cut. He's got more of a beard going on. You see Lola, Howls of the Fallen. She has kind of like a. She has also got covered in battle scars. And finally, Titus speaks for the unheard. The, the other one who had been with Appleton is there. He's smoking a cigarette. He looks grizzled since the last time you've seen him. The scars run across his face as he's clearly gone hand to hand with something with claws. Hey, Mark. Long time no see. Titus speaks up. Mark will walk closer towards like the center of the... Abandoned warehouse. Has been a long time. Just an abandoned house. Oh, just an abandoned house, yeah. Has been a long time. Figured. Figured I'd come looking for you guys. Just had a feeling I should. Good to see you. Big trouble, big shot too, I hear. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Lots of trouble. Heard a good deal. Heard a good deal. Anyway, we've been trying to keep it up too. Fighting the good fight. I could see that. Titus, how you been? I haven't seen you all since well boulder yeah boulder open my eyes mark open my eyes just been doing what we can and fighting for mori wasn't enough so we're trying to go to the source oh yeah yeah been slowly collecting fertilizer from across several state lines cash only doing some chemistry hitting some warehouses definitely some dangerous chemistry titus we're Wherever it dwells, whenever it breeds. And it breeds in those shitholes and the misery it brings. So we burn them to the fucking ground now. Try and keep as many innocents out of it. But if there's upper management or just middle management in that building, it goes up like a matchstick. As he flicks on his lighter and just has the fire kind of glow for a second. Wherever it dwells, wherever it breeds. And a step's issues and dealings are a step's issues and dealings. Ah, uh, well, we're true, though. I just worry about the innocents. Sure, but it's time to do something. Plenty of innocents, but plenty of innocents die every day if we did nothing. Those warehouses break kneecaps. People work themselves to the bone and die destitute. Like you said, better to do something than nothing in that case. This tour for the Concordat I've been taking with my pack and my allies has opened my eyes to to a lot of things things aren't things aren't as black as white and there's a lot of gray that we gotta get through yeah Which but i things guess are there. i'm sorry but i guess this is what it leads you to this decision yep things are a lot darker than you think too here's the thing we're gonna blow up a couple gas stations we're gonna blow up a couple places and we're gonna make it so that people fear to use their fucking cars and they can either pass policy or they can get so goddamn mad that they rip their governors down and they eat them alive. Gaia be with you on that. You're gonna have to make them hard choices soon too, Mark. Gotta get through this Concordat first. 
True enough. I'm rooting for you. Good to know that, actually. I didn't come here specifically for that. I I just had this feeling. Mark will kind of look off. Years ago, when I first started all this, just months after my training, I met you guys. And you guys showed me a good time here. You guys showed me another side of the nation I never saw. And I don't know, just this ominous foreboding feeling it's going to end here. And I guess I just wanted the just wanted to see some people that helped out too along with me and my pack appreciate that as lola kind of goes and i appreciate that too she comes in and gives you a hug it has been too long mark will come down for the hug too it has been oh let's speak on better things i got a few days until the concordat things have been up and down and the ups have been good gotta focus on that yeah hey there's some things definitely have happened since i've last met you guys you guys know of the rivers of erebus right yeah no we have well you're looking at a survivor of those molten silver rivers really mark will recount uh a great the great time of the great lying and the great truth telling of sacred stone and how they had to go to erebus to cleanse themselves of the great sin pretty much and yeah, all of us but one made it back. That's, wow. That's pretty crazy, man. But yeah, we've been we've been doing our thing. We've been jumping around. I know a couple of us came across a few cyber dogs that tried to escape the purge, and we were luckily in their way. We've been fighting spirals, and they said, taking the good fight. The Garu have been kind of, we've been trying to join the monkey wrenchers, working with them. What are the monkey wrenchers? I'm not familiar with them. Group of mostly bone gnars and, and glass walkers, but there's a couple others of us, like us children of Gaia and a few Geta Fenris. We go in and we do corporate espionage and uh, do what some would call eco-terrorism. We bomb plants, we take on files, we start putting a wrench in the system. That's the good work, definitely. Maybe you guys can join after everything's said and done. I know that you guys are kind of, uh, well, squeamish, Titus says. These days, I wouldn't say so much. Maybe we can join you after the Concordat. Depends on the ruling. Yeah, man. Sure does. It sure does. But no, you're right. It would feel good to not be on the defensive anymore, you know? Not reacting, but acting. Exactly. That's what we gotta do. Ngaru have been acting, but we've been... I think we've been playing with kid gloves to some degree with at least some institutions. Those can be scary institutions, Titus. I know we've come across them. Appleton. Appleton. As you see him shift into Glabro. Yeah. He's scary, got, all right. I got news on her, if you want to hear. Absolutely. And Mark will break down how she's a namer now, and how unfortunately there is another namer that they are dealing with. He won't get too much details in with the good doctor with them because he doesn't want to risk them getting involved with that. He doesn't want... As he's hearing all this and he shifts into Krinos, as his eyes go blank, uh, Mark, I need Dex Athletics. Okay. So you dodge out of the way as the claw comes crashing down and the others have to spend rage to try and shift and hold him down. As Night Eyes and Jason go... Mark, leave. Mark will back away. Yeah, he'll just leave. <laughs> There's a crash and you get a block down before you just hear this horrifying howl of rage that just echoes through the city. All right. And then, Sean, what were we doing again? Uh, well, I mean, assuming Zeb's mom finds him, I figured he'd be out trying to sneak a smoke and the old woman sneaks up on him first. But uh, if that's not a thing, then I'm not doing a damn thing. All right. You are snuck up upon while smoking, but it is not your man. Zeb will turn startled as he is rarely snuck upon. As you see a rather imposing North, uh, uh, rather imposing Middle Eastern man. He kind of walks up, nods at you as he has a black woman with him as well as he nods to you. You are Zeb, it speaks in sweet whispers. Zeb will, like, 
put it out in his hand. I am. You have the better of me, sir. My name is Walks with Might. Lupus Elder Arun of the Silent Striders. Honored Elder. I wanted to meet you, and you are difficult to find. The Sept of the Green seems to want to make sure that you are only found if you wish to be found. I'd hope to speak to some of our kin, Elder. That's good. Set's eye opens. I have been told we have many considerations of how to proceed. If great sacrifices must be made to ensure that the prison around Set and he will spit must be kept, or if this event just leads to more. I considered the prophecies of Ibn Hakim for these times. I find myself inclined toward those prophecies. I am inclined to keep an asset and only discard it when it turns to be useless to us. It is a cold way of thinking. It is leech thought, and it makes my hackles rise to know that I must think like such in these dark times. I have felt the balance between the wolf heart and the human mind on these things, talking to many, compromising on things I would not normally. I would say the same to you that I've said to many. If what has come is spared, it still must be watched, and I do not fall into beliefs of messiahs. If there are more of them to come, we must know them completely. Read, though... I am not so willing to cast away messiahs. We are a culture that thrives on them. We have had a prophet, a Christ, a messiah, on a cross, on the rack, in the fire, every few generations. We stand on the stones and the skulls of messiahs. That may be so, and they were allowed to live and to speak to serve their divine purpose until the time where they knew their sacrifice would come, betrayal or otherwise. I would hope we would not act hastily as a people now, which is why I pledged at least myself and those of my pack mates to this fate, to see it decided. There is more should things go poorly, and I would warn our kin about that, of the great dangerous worm-aligned namers that act now against us, one in particular here on this continent. This division alone weakens us, but we are vulnerable in many places, especially now. That is why I've brought her. She brings news, and perhaps a message of hope, that I hope that will be spread during this concordant. The child, your fates, though I do believe in messiahs, I do also believe that they are only a small fragment, and others can rise to take the divine place. But she brings some th- news, News of hope, perhaps? News of some th- the world changing. Zeb will look at her. Who are you, messenger? What do you bring? Uh, she speaks in a relatively thick accent as she goes, I don't know about messenger, but my name is Kasasi. It is a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is mine if you can bring hope in these extremely trying times. I certainly hope so. The Endless Storm has been vanquished, and Blacktooth has been killed. That's incredible news. That opens a great way for us. And some of you have joined. I have spoken to your Silent Striders, to your... Oh, to your Kucha and Kudu. I have spoken to the Simba, the Swara, the Makole Membe. That is why I've come, with my message. Zeb will, you know, look back at his elder. Would the children of Val consider the same path taken by the stargazers? No, not quite. We think that we can still be part of the nation and help this newly formed confederation. The Ahadi, formed by young Kasasi here. Zeb will, like, like take her hands. Thank you very much for this, and this news. There are so many that dream of going home. It's a pleasure, yes. Uh, (laughs) She kind of laughs. Let me formally introduce myself, I suppose. 
I am Kasasi, Tilau of the Abaja. I would assume that Zeb's knowledge would be strictly like, yes, those are African names I have heard before. <laughs> yeah, Zeb's probably like, ah. Uh... Cool. And that's kind of what Zeb's going to do, just like, and you for- and, and, and you formed a great confederation now with others. <laughs> She, she kind of laughs and goes, it means that I am not one of you, Garu, of course. It means that I am a were-hyena. Well, this makes our meeting all the more exciting for me. There are many pains between the Garu and the other Pharah, but many of the Pharah did not experience the worst of the Wars of Rage in Africa, and so we are able to forgive some of Owl's brood. But... From what I've seen, your African cousins are more inclined to work together. They're willing to work towards proving that they have changed, rather than simply hoping to be forgiven. I think that is an incredibly accurate assessment of the situation in general, yes. Everyone wants to be absolved if they think enough generations have passed. Correct. When the... well... They still have the upper hand, and they're not willing to lower themselves to raise those they have struck down back to their feet. Well, it's easy to dredge up something worse, isn't it? There's always something worse. Just can't find the time. But I will speak at your concordant and simply hope that my life is not lost. Your walks with might is an excellent Garu. But I have still heard rumors of your kind, not to not to offend. No offense is taken. You are about to walk into a great gathering to decide the fate of one of our warborn, under significant signs, of course. But I believe everything you've and Zeb will you know, chuckle. Everything you summarize is entirely accurate, and may perhaps helps form. Uh, your observations will form a much more solvent opinion coming out of it. We can hope. So, a couple of days have passed. It's about another day before the Concordant when Cora, you finally do get some word on where Agatha is. Okay. As you start going, you get to back alley. It's kind of gross and all that. As you see the old woman wrapped in a, a blanket, her eyes are kind of sunken. Her hair seems a little more sparse than before. Oh... Aura. Auntie, what's going on? Age. <laughs> You're not old. My bones beg to differ. Your Garu, what do you tell your bones? You tell them to fuck off. How would I stand, silly child? How would they tell me prophecies? Fair. Um, sit. The trash is quite comfortable. Coral, sit down, sit down next to her. Lean on me if you need to. Oh, I will. Don't worry. She brings up a hand and pats you. Lightly on the shoulder. <laughs> it's almost time. Yeah, I don't mind saying to you, pretty scary. Are you scared? I'm worried. Why are you worried? You can lean on me if you need to. <laughs> oh, haven't you heard our stories about of us, though? I've experienced them. <laughs> wouldn't you be worried? It, but yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten in those stories if I was one to worry. At least not overly long. <laughs> uh, that's just. I was, I was worried about you. Well, I'm still, I'm worried about you. I didn't see you at the sept, and I've been formulating plans, saving my strength for tomorrow. We're still fighting on whether the concordant will be in the physical or the umbral realm. Ooh, eleventh hour decisions, huh? An important decision. Yeah. Do it in the physical world. All the Garu must be in Hamid, which will likely raise some temperature, some tempers, and cause potential frenzies. Will likely get noticed by the police, but on the flip side, if the spirals try to attack us to steal the child, they will also have to contend with the police, and so they cannot come with their full force to do it. If we're in the Umbra, we don't have to contend with the police. Everyone can be in the form they wish. But if the spirals do come, they will come with force. I can see why it's such a hard decision. I'm sorry to put you in such a space. 
These are sorts of questions that one must do in a sept surrounded by this kind of city. Mm. Haven't been in the big city too awful much. <laughs> I know. I know. Sometimes I think you'll get yourself dizzy looking up at all the buildings. Tell you the truth, I try to look, I try not to. <laughs> I know that too. <laughs> You're very observant, Auntie. It comes with the territory of speaking to our cousins. You have to watch them. They have different things about them, each one unique, even if they all come from the same brood. One spirit of glass is completely different from another. Every spirit of the rat is ever so different because a rat means a million things to a million people and even more things to a single rat. And so they form out of those ideas and you must witness and understand that about them. And to make deals with them, you have to understand their intricacies, see how they react. That is the, well, that's the key to crafting fetishes for our people too, to know what the spirit wants. And it also helps run a sept sometimes. Fair, fair. So, yeah, I came to find you. I was worried. And it, like, is it just the plans that you're making you're out here for, or what's that? Uh, it's my kin were getting burdened with me in my, on their couch. They needed to have me out or their landlord would have thrown them out. So I just found my favorite alley with my favorite blanket to just rest for a bit. My eyes are getting very heavy. It's unfortunate that your sept doesn't allow for you to stay there. It's difficult, and it is because, well, there's the police for one thing. The other thing is, I see that sept every day. Sometimes I need to move around myself. I need to be near those my tribe professes to protect. I've seen more kindness in the hearts of humanity these past two weeks because they think I'm one of them and they know that I'm dying. No, don't say that. You're a big, strong girl. <laughs> you don't have to lie to yourself or me. It's a truth, child, as she just pulls you in to like lay across her lap as she just goes, we all die. And I'm just one who the worm wasn't fast enough. Time got me. There's nothing shameful about that, is there? Are you asking... Are you asking my tribe or me? Which one do you want to answer as? You keep it a secret, I'll answer as me. I'm very good at keeping secrets. I know for a fact it is that... You, that Roger is the one who let you through without paying a talent and he did it to get out of punishment by <laughs> saying you just ran. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Uh, you've kept that secret a while. <laughs> But to answer your question, I don't see shame in it. Then don't lie to me. Don't lie to yourself. Just accept the truth. It's okay. Now the truth is I don't want you to be dying. But want in one hand shit in the other, right? Yeah. I can't change that. Nor would I want to. Unless I wanted to become some sort of leech, which ugh. Ugh. It's just natural. It's just natural, child. And yeah. being surrounded by death. I know that it's hard to accept, but sometimes you get old and you're ready for it sometimes. Some days I think I'll make a great ancestor spirit, and others I wonder if my soul will reincarnate soon enough to fight in the last battle. The only thing I'm sorry about is I have to leave it up to you now. I'm sorry about that too. And she'll look up. At, it, at Agatha, Agatha's face. What can I do for you now? What can I do Just to make you more comfortable? Or help out in any way? You're doing it now. And tomorrow, even if I can't do it quite as literally as I had hoped, we'll stand shoulder to shoulder and fight like hell. And that's good enough for me. And I hope it's good enough for you. I will be very, very cross if you are not standing shoulder to shoulder with us. I'm gonna take a nap now. Coral sit up and like gently lay Agatha down, kind of pile the trash up a little bit as a makeshift pillow as best as she can, <laughs> and it's like cover her with the blanket. Do you need me to get some food or anything? Oh, I haven't had an appetite. Thank you. See you tomorrow, Cora. 
Even just soup? Even just soup. You'll be there tomorrow. I will. The worm itself couldn't hold me back. I'll hold you to it. I will hunt you down. I know you will. <laughs> Sleep well, Auntie. As you're all kind of hanging out, still the day before the Concordance, Steven kind of comes up and knocks on the door again. Um, I'm going to take this time. Uh, if Cora's back, she'll be playing with uh, Meatball in the hotel room. I'll let him in. He let him in. He goes, I got big news. Uh, what could possibly be big enough? <laughs> That's not happening tomorrow. The Margrave just got here. Oh, well, shit. Yeah, that makes sense. That will do it. He brought Anna Klimschke with him, too. I didn't expect that. Who is that? She is a Shadow Lord Arun who is known for having a record of no losses in one-on-one duels. Her father tried to make her a ronin, and she beat and killed him before the Council of Elders during her rite of passage to earn the right of being a Shadow Lord. Do you think the Margrave is expecting some duels to break out? Are you expecting a group of a few thousand Garu not to have duels break out? No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, he's here. That's who he brought. She's intimidating as hell. Big Tatiana guts the weak energy. Yippee. That might be a fun duel to watch. Yes. Honestly, might not even take much convincing. That might not even need to be concordant related. What are you thinking, bud? Thoughts I shouldn't be having. Let I don't have the time to think about those things. <laughs> Kyle Garslow breaking the litany in his mind, hoping that two dummy mommies step on him? <laughs> no, no. I can see why you'd think it. I've got that kind of face. But no, I oh. I just thought that she might lose some uh, credence if she was voting against us with that record and she lost to Guts the Week right beforehand. That's true. That's true. Let's see, though. Everyone's on edge. They finally determined the Concordant a couple of minutes ago is going to be in the Umbra. So, uh, oh, hope the kid doesn't freak out too much. Uh, yeah, um, what do you know about the Umbra, Meatball? And he's, uh, as Meatball goes, um, that is where spirits are. S memories from far back went once. Well, we'll, uh, We'll go over more of it tonight. As Steven kind of pulls you aside and whispers, I'm talking about the shards of glass and the gauntlet. I know that. I'll get him prepped for the pain. Good man. Don't envy you. When have you? Once or twice. <laughs> that baby face. I guess when the face covers the brain damage so well. Yep. Looking pretty talking dumb. Just how I like him. <laughs> Meatball whispers in Cora's ear. What does that mean? It means that Uncle Steven is a weirdo, but he's cool. Kind of nods. Anyway, see y'all tomorrow? <sighs> tomorrow. Try and get some sleep. Last thing you need is to make arguments while sleep deprived. There's going to be still wheeling and dealing at the Concordant for an agreement. Oh, I imagine I could make these arguments asleep at this point. But thank you. You're right. You all kind of go to sleep? You have a little bit of time as you guys hit some breakfast places and bring it back. Meatball eats enough for three before you get him in a large trench coat, cover up his head with a hoodie, and walk and try and get him to Central Park, which is luckily not too far away from your hotel for obvious reasons. As you see a huge conglomerate of people starting to walk towards the set. Some of them you recognize here and there. Some have likely gone in via the Umbra just to keep things down, but it's still a couple hundred people going on a evening stroll through Central Park. It's almost intimidating, and we'll see how the concordant shakes out next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We'll catch you in that next episode. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. See you then.